Hello, and welcome to my mod list showcase, where I give an overview and opinion on mod lists to help find the right one for you. This time, we are looking at the Kizel mod list by Tate Taylor, released for Skyrim Special Edition and Anniversary Edition. Also, I hope I'm pronouncing the list correctly. The version I've been playing on is the 6.4 version, released on the 21st of April 2022. You can check on the Kizel Discord linked below for any changes and updates. Firstly, what is Kizel? The description reads, Kizel is a simple mod list that seeks to enhance and expand on Skyrim without compromising Bethesda's original vision that we all fell in love with back in 2011, with a focus on mods that improve immersion, game stability, and add longevity to the playtime. Kizal is available to download from the Wabberjack Modlist installer. While I won't cover the specifics of the installation in this video, the installation was incredibly easy, with clear instructions provided. For help with the download, you can follow along with my Wabberjack Explanation Guide video on my channel and linked below. With around 800 mods, this list will need about 200GB of storage to download. And once in game, all of the mod menus are already configured, so you just click play and get to it. Now for what the mod list adds. For this showcase, I'll be showing clips taken throughout my current playthrough. I've spent plenty of time with this list and so I have a good grasp on what it's like to play. Project Clarity provides the base of all the updated textures, with a number of other texture mods on top to provide the high definition look, but for the most part, the world looks like a higher quality version of vanilla. There are some mods like Cities of the North, which add new models to many of the buildings within cities. Also they actually feel like unique locations, and not just expanded farms. And the same theme sticks with the foliage, with mods like Mari's Flora making forests feel familiar, but far more detailed and dense. As for weather, Obsidian Weathers has been included, which provides realistic weathers with a touch of vibrancy. And this is something I didn't even know was a thing, but I love it so much, and that is changing seasons. So with a mixture of mods like Seasons of Skyrim and Changing of the Seasons, the weather will change depending on the time of the year. So for example, it's usually always dry and sunny in Whiterun, but now in the winter, snow will actually cover the textures. It's such a simple thing, but it's really impactful. By default, this list doesn't come with an EMB, which I'm honestly fine with. It means you can get a lot of performance out of this list while still looking good. And if you're like me and do want to use an EMB, there are ones you can still add, which I'll talk about in the add-on section. As for performance, this list strikes a good balance of being heavily modded but still running great on a variety of PCs. It's still more demanding than vanilla, but this list is a great option if you want to have a bunch of mods while not completely tanking your FPS, like some other lists of similar size. It's also worth noting I encountered minimal bugs and found this list to be incredibly stable. This list comes with a number of gameplay overhauls, but still manages to keep the vanilla feel and remain lore friendly. For perks, the mod Adamant has been added, which overhauls Skyrim's perk trees to both balance existing skills and add powerful new perks, providing more interesting playstyles and gameplay variation. Adamant also pairs with the Mysticism mod, which tweaks the existing spells and magic effects to make them more balanced and useful for specific situations. And by the same mod author is Pilgrim, which changes up religion in Skyrim, adding new shrine abilities, prayer mechanics, and priest vendors. Alchemy and smithing is also improved, with mods such as the Alchemy Cookbook and more craftable equipment, which adds new recipes to learn and items to craft. And finally, the Immersive Encounters mod scatters more NPCs into the world, so you'll come across more merchants, bandit raids and more. Overall, the main focus of the gameplay is to improve what was already provided and add more variety to the world and potential playstyles. The key combat mod is Blade and Blunt, which really slows down combat to make every strike more costly, but also more damaging. The mod comes with a number of new features, but just to list off some of the most important, enemy AI is more intelligent and aggressive, with your weapon drawn and when attacking, you will now move considerably slower, you will no longer regenerate stamina when attacking, and drawing a bow will also drain your stamina, and when it falls below zero, your character will experience a series of debuffs. However, 
Magicka and Stamina both regenerate a little faster. Attacking when the enemy is vulnerable would deal 50% more damage, large creatures like giants are tougher to take down, and overall, damage values have been balanced depending on what difficulty you're playing on. While I've listed a good amount of changes, it's worth checking out the Blade and Blunt Nexus page for all the details. On top of this, mods like Man Beast and Scion add more options for werewolf and vampire playstyles. And if you're into third person combat, True Directional Movement modernises the third person movement to feel so much better than vanilla. All this, plus the huge amount of new perks with Adamant, makes the combat far more enjoyable and allows for more specific playstyles while making things a little more difficult. Kizau makes a point of keeping things lore friendly and fitting naturally into the world. The huge Beyond Skyrim Bruma mod has been added, which connects the neighbouring county of Bruma to Skyrim, offering a huge amount of content with new quests, NPCs, weapons, armour and more. On top of this, huge quest mods like Worm's Tooth is included, adding hours of playtime to the game. There's also mods which aim on improving Skyrim's existing quests, for example, the mods House of Horrors and Dark Brotherhood Rising Revengeance, great name by the way, add in new paths for certain quests to better suit specific roleplay choices. And of final note, the mod Lawbringer changes the landscape as you clear it of bandits, replacing specific bandit locations with a faction of your choice. And with Civil War Aftermath, you can clear out encampments to support whichever side of the war you're on. New music has been included with the list, using tracks from the Northerner Diaries and Chapter 2. These mods not only include Skyrim inspired music, but also actual tracks from the original composer, so they definitely fit the theme. As for the sounds of the world, the High Definition Audio Project cleans up much of the game's original audio to sound crisp and clean, and a couple of smaller mods add some general ambience to the world. Have a listen for yourself. Kizel adds a good amount of new weapons and armour, but also focuses on adding variety to Skyrim's existing ones. Weapons included with the Beyond Skyrim quest mod are distributed into Skyrim, and all fit as if they were always there. And the same goes for new armours, with some being brought over from Bruma, and a couple of new unique armour and clothing mods sprinkled throughout. It's also worth noting, if you have the Anniversary Edition, you'll be getting most of those new armours and weapons as well. And as for new spells, the previously mentioned Mysticism mod also adds 200 new spells into the game, all of which with the aim of feeling lore friendly and balanced to work alongside Skyrim's own spells. For some other notable changes, the mod Survival Mode Improved does exactly what it says, as Skyrim's own survival mode is made much better with the cold, hunger and exhaustion systems all tweaked to feel more natural and balanced. NPC designs have a number of updates, while mostly sticking to their vanilla looks. The mod Quick Loot adds the easy looting system from Fallout 4. Open City Skyrim makes it so there's no loading screens when leaving a city, which is actually one of my favourite mods for Skyrim that often doesn't work with lists, so I'm glad to see it here. The HUD has been improved, providing more information and adding health bars above enemies, which you can switch off with True HUD if that's not for you. And finally, a few new followers have been added, including Shirley, Lucian, and the Essential Corgis. Now for some additions to the list, but first I must stress, any changes you make to the list has nothing to do with the mod list author. You should only do so if you have an understanding of modding and accept that any consequences are yours to deal with. So as I mentioned before, Kizel doesn't come with an EMB, so if you do want to add one, you'll need to find an EMB that works with Obsidian Weathers, which will usually be made clear on its mod page. And as for adding it to the game, the vast majority will have a simple installation guide in their description. As for other mods to add on, honestly, there's nothing I can think of adding without compromising the list's vision. 
Although it is worth noting that for Creation Club content, the install guide has a list of what works and doesn't work with this list, so it's worth checking out first. I felt that Kizau's focus on immersion really stood out to me when playing. As while well, sure, it's not the absolute best Skyrim can look, the visuals are still good, and the list does a great job of making Skyrim feel like a living, breathing world. As an example, I can walk up to Whiterun, open the gate with no loading screens, see the city changed by the winter weather, then head inside, and see NPCs warming by the fire and removing their hoods. It's just loads of little things like these which really bring the world to life, and improve the overall land of Skyrim, which I think is already the game's biggest strength. What I love about Skyrim mod lists is that there's plenty all across the spectrum. Some focus on the vanilla feel, some are complete game changes, and then there's everything in between, and Kizel knows exactly what it wants to be, adding on to the game's strengths, and then including some extra content on top that doesn't compromise the vanilla vision. So if you're looking to play some more Skyrim that offers more to do and enhances the world, but doesn't feel like a completely new game, then this list is for you. Thank you for watching! If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like as it helps the channel grow. There's also the subscribe button, that's pretty cool, and there's, there's a bell. Um, I don't know if anyone actually presses the bell, but hey, you could give that a ring. I also have a Twitch where I just play relaxing games and create a nice vibey atmosphere. And a Discord if you want to talk about mod stuff or anything else. Other than that, big thank you to my Patreon supporters. Emperor Wolf, Libby DVR, Jacob Amino, Blue Buddy, Jack Ma, Michael Eric, and Christian Hell. Because of you, this channel can keep on growing. And uh, one day when I'm at the top of YouTube, you know, above everyone else, the, the PewDiePies and the, the Marky Pliers, um, I will read out your names in pride and say you were there from the beginning. Thank you and farewell.